Welcome everyone to our online worship today from St. Paul's Anglican Church and Trinity United Church here at Uxbridge. It is always good to be in partnership with each other, and especially for me personally to work with Karen. It's always a pleasure. Today we are liturgically observing Canada Day in our worship together. However, this year it is with a different spirit, given the graves that have been discovered on what was residential school land. Our prayers, our scripture, reflections, and hymns will reflect this time of lamenting, grieving, and a call to action moving forward. We are people of God. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And as such, we are called in this sacred moment of history as a country to acknowledge the part that we played as settlers in colonizing this land. As such, travesties like the residential school system have resulted in so much injustice, grief, judgment, poverty, and racism that often continues to this very day. We need to repent. And we need to ask faithfully how we can act going forward in line with who we are and all we profess to believe. May our worship today bring us to repentance, that we may express our desire for healing and reconciliation to continue, for in that there is hope. As we prepare to worship, let us take a moment of quiet. And now we acknowledge the land. We acknowledge that the Creator entrusted the land on which we gather to First Nations peoples. We strive to decolonize our hearts, minds, and spaces, to make right with all of our relations. May it be so.
while the words to this hymn are so relevant in our time in the face of so much injustice among our indigenous communities, both in the past and in the present. And especially the third verse, when it comes to residential schools and the discovery of unmarked graves. Listen again to the words. All that kills abundant living, let it from the earth be banned. Pride of status, race, or schooling, dogmas that obscure your plan. In our common quest for justice, may we hallow life's brief span. May it indeed be so. Amen. Hear from the prophet Micah. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? We hear what the Lord requires of us. May we leave empty talk and pride behind. May we be prepared to step out in faith, even into troubled waters, when only God knows where we might need to go. Don't be afraid. Jesus will guide our steps along the way, teaching us to walk humbly, to love boldly, to serve God with body, soul, mind, and strength. Let us pray for the humility and courage to follow where the Spirit leads. Let us not rush to the language of healing before understanding the fullness of the injury and the depth of the wounds many still feel today. Let us not rush to offer a band-aid when the gaping wound requires so much more for healing. Let us listen for the deeper story, for the many stories, even if they are painful to hear. Let us believe one another when we talk about our pain, even if it is not a pain we know and experience. Let us see that systems are broken, that relationships are broken. Let us be willing to be the healing we pray for and hope to see in the world. Let us not value property over people. Let us not protect material objects while injustice still prevails. Let us not be afraid to sit with the ugliness, the messiness, and the pain that is a reality as graves continue to be found. Instead, let us mourn our Indigenous brothers, sisters, and siblings. Let us lament the loss of life, the loss of culture, and the loss of identity because of residential schools. Let us be humble and listen to the pain, rage, and grief pouring from the lips of all who continue to suffer from experiences in the past and experiences in the present, too. Let us become compassionate in our souls, faithfully following in the steps of Jesus as we live out our discipleship in ministries of justice and reconciliation. God in mercy, show us our complicity to injustice as descendants of settlers who colonize this land. Convict us from any indifference we may feel. Forgive us when we have remained silent. Equip us with a passion for justice. Never let us turn away from realities of standing in the face of injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer of lamentation and confession, and grant us the certainty of your absolution. And especially, gracious God, lead us forward to a new way of being, working for justice, respect, and dignity among all people, and especially among our Indigenous people. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, from your every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people 
journeying together in partnership, especially with our Indigenous communities, may be strengthened and guided as individuals, as the Church, and as a nation. To help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is always our light and our life. Amen. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host, one by one, and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting, God the creator of the ends, the ends of earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And now a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlivens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us pray. May God's truth be spoken and may God's truth be heard. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus wept. A profound moment of connection, standing alongside those who were grieving outside of Lazarus' tomb, overcome with emotion himself. Jesus wept. That's what comes to mind on this Sunday when we observe Canada Day, when I think of the continued struggles of our Indigenous people and the finding of unmarked graves at residential school sites, and knowing that there will be more discovered. 
Jesus wept. Jesus cries with sobs and joins in with those who are grieving, those whose children were taken from them, those whose ancestors lived through realities of residential schools, those who died and were buried in unmarked graves, those who live today with the legacy that impacts so much of their experience of life, those who continue to face injustice and discrimination because of their indigenous heritage, those who live in poverty, those who don't have access to the very basics of clean water, those who look at their lives and think there's nothing left to live for, especially young people who don't see any way out of where they are now. Jesus wept, and Jesus weeps today too through each of us who hear the reports, our hearts are breaking because we see the images and we know and we recognize that our ancestors, those who settled on this land, allowed this to happen, this travesty of justice. And the churches we are part of were instrumental too. But as people of faith, as followers of Jesus Christ, at the center of our faith is the belief in the hope for the future that things can be different than they are now, that there can be justice where there is injustice, reconciliation in relationships that are fragile and fractured, forgiveness where there has been and is sin, healing where there is brokenness. That's the very essence of the gospel, isn't it? That's the good news of Jesus Christ. And for that to be a reality in our country, in our time, we need to be an integral part of making it happen through truth and honesty and penitence and a desire on our part to do better. Whatever is required of us to make things right again for our Indigenous brothers, sisters, and siblings. For sure, we can't undo the past. It is part of our history that can't be changed or undone. There is nothing we can do about that sad reality and that truth. It is what it is. However, we can do something about the present, and we can certainly do something about the future, too. Our calling and our vocation as disciples of Jesus Christ is to do no less to accept not just the role that we as churches played in the past, but equally the role that we as churches can play in living out the future too, and reshaping the lived experiences of Indigenous people in our country today. The incarnation, the birth of Jesus, as we heard about in that wonderful, eloquent passage from St. John, is timeless. And it's the reminder of why Jesus was born in the first place, why God sent Jesus to this earth to live a human life, to face human trials and temptations and tra tragedies, to face death on a cross, all to bring light into a dark world. And nothing, nothing, nothing can extinguish that light, not even the power of the cross, not even the power of death, and in our time, not even the reality and consequences of residential schools and the finding of unmarked graves. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is the one at the center of any healing that can happen and that will happen. But that doesn't take away what we need to do to contribute to that healing and reconciliation that is so needed during such a time as this. God at work in us and God working through us can and will restore and renew the experience of Indigenous people. But we need to say yes. We need to accept that healing can and will happen as we sit alongside Indigenous people and really listen to the hard truths they speak as they share their lived experience, their pain, their grief, their loss. 
Our baptismal identity requires no less of us, so that we can seek and serve Christ among our brothers and sisters and siblings, so that we may love our indigenous neighbor as we love ourselves, so that we may strive for justice and peace among our indigenous people, so that we may respect the dignity of those who are the first people of our land. Remember, though, although it's required that we say yes, that we don't do any of these on our own, but rather with God's help and with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Recently, I attended our online diocesan clergy conference over Zoom, and one of the things that struck me was the conversation on the topic of the soul of the institution. Every institution has a soul, whether we're talking about the church or our country of Canada. It is the essence of who we are. It is what unites us together in a common purpose and vision. It is what connects us in relationship to each other. It is the guiding spirit to how we treat each other and what we value and priorities we see as most important. Right now, the soul of our country of Canada is broken. And it has been broken for a long time, whether we realized it or not, whether we acknowledged it or not. The soul of Canada is about justice and freedom and inclusion and peace. And around the world, we are known widely for our peacekeeping efforts, our desire to help other countries be and become the best that they can be. In truth, we've made significant contributions throughout history to places that have experienced a restoration and a maintenance of peace and justice in many countries around the world. But what about here at home, on our own soil, among our own people? Yes, we welcomed refugees and given them a home of safety and security, we have health care that is readily available to anyone who needs it. We tend to respond to the needs of those who are living in poverty. And we advocate and speak up, especially for those who have nowhere to live. We look to make it a better experience for all of them in our country of Canada. But underlying all of that, all the realities that we'd rather remain hidden from the world, and what to date has been buried in the ground and left out of our history books. Canada is a wonderful country, there's no denying that. However, as much as any other country, we too are a broken people with institutional and systemic issues that are equally in need of being paid attention to right in our own backyard. Now, with the discovery of these unmarked graves and knowing that there will be more, now is the time to heal the soul of Canada. And as churches following the example and the witness of Jesus, we have a responsibility to be part of healing the soul of Canada. Our worship today, as we solemnly observe this Canada Day, reflects some of what we need to do and what we need to keep doing, because healing doesn't happen overnight, and neither does reconciliation. Chief Cadmus DeLone, an elder from southern Saskatchewan, said it better than I could ever say. He said, all we ask from all of you listening is that you stand by us as we heal and get stronger. We all must put down our ignorance and accidental racism of not addressing the truth that this country has with Indigenous people. We are not asking for pity, but we are asking for understanding. We need time to heal, and this country must stand with us. One of the things that I heard him saying very clearly is, as we heal, as we get strong. And what that says to me is he believes himself that it is indeed possible, that it indeed can be so, healing and strength for our Indigenous people. 
And isn't that the gospel of Jesus? Healing is always possible. It can be so. It will be so. The Honorable Murray Sinclair chaired the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and very recently he said this quote, Truth is hard. Reconciliation is harder. As a country, we are hearing the hard truth of residential schools, and we are affected by it in the grief, the sadness, the anger that we ourselves experience as non-Indigenous people. But now the real work begins the hard work of reconciliation. The gospel is all about reconciliation. God's reconciliation with his people and our reconciliation with God through Jesus Christ. But equally, our reconciliation with each other as God's creation. Our worship today takes us beyond lamenting and grieving and repenting, ultimately to a place of hope that with God's help and a true desire in each of us that we can reclaim the soul of our country of Canada, we can become the best of who we desire to be. May it indeed be so. Amen. especially their loss so far away from home. We grieve the loss of youth with so much potential. These were children of this place, children of our land. The loss of their giftedness is our collective loss. We lament how long their families have had to live with unanswered questions. Hear our prayers for those who were not informed of their children's deaths, for those who were not told of where their daughters and sons had been buried, for those who have long hoped that a child who went missing somehow survived and had a good life, even as they may have also feared the worst. We lament our complicity in the loss of these children. As members of churches which ran residential schools, we seek your help as we look to redress the many ways in which our churches failed these Indigenous children, their families, and their communities. We pray that your reconciling love 
will teach us how to create true bonds of community and understanding as Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples today. We lift up with gratitude the efforts of all those who are seeking to honour the lives of the children who died, as well as the children whose fates are unknown. Through ongoing research and acts of remembrance, we ask for your continued guidance upon them as they work to uncover the stories of the lost. We understand how precious this information is and how vital it is to the healing of so many families and communities. Bless those who are preparing to honour the children with sacred ceremonies and those who work to protect burial sites in keeping with the traditions of Indigenous peoples across this land. We pray for the families of these children and for all who love them. Envelop them in the warmth of your infinite care and give them peace. Inspire all of us with energy, wisdom and commitment to the loving pursuit of the truth which will heal all of us in our brokenness and lead to reconciliation with our neighbours across this land. And now we sum up all of our prayers by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as, those, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our city tied to you, O Lord, from out of Oh, 
A poem by Rebecca Tabo Bondun, titled Reconciliation. We are waking up to our history from a forced slumber. We are breathing it into our lungs, so it will be a part of us again. It will make us angry at first because we will see how much you stole from us and for how long you watched us suffer. We will see how you see us and how when we copied your ways, we killed our own. We will cry and cry and cry because we can never be the same again. But we will go home to cry and we will see ourselves in this huge mess and we will gently whisper the circle back and it will be old and it will be new. Then we will breathe our history back to you. You will feel how strong and alive it is and you will feel yourself become a part of it and it will shock you at first because it is too big to see all at once and you won't want to believe it. You will see how you see us and all the disaster in your ways, how much we lost. And you will cry and cry and cry because we can never be the same again. But we will cry with you and we will see ourselves in this huge mess and we will gently whisper the circle back and it will be old and it will be new. Let us pray. Creator God, we look at your world and praise you for the diversity all around us. Thank you for the gift of relationships, our connection with people, animals, and the land. Help us, gracious God, to see differences and diversity as a strength. Help us to listen and to understand, to meet one another with wonder and anticipation. Help us to love as you love, without expectation or judgment. Reveal to us your way of reconciliation and guide us into right relationships with all living things. Lead us to understand how Indigenous peoples have been and continue to be profoundly harmed by settler people and institutions. Lead us to repent when we as settlers deny Indigenous people respect, dignity, and fullness of life. Help us to listen compassionately, to speak humbly, and to act justly. Help us to seek the peace, justice, and reconciliation you desire among all of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us this country of Canada. May we prove ourselves a people mindful of your generosity and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honourable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times as we are in at this moment, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, as we join in singing our national anthem, as we observe this candidate day, may we do so as a prayer for what we hope to become, a country where all are indeed free, a country that is stronger because we have named and faced our past in order to move into our future. Especially pay attention to the last verse that we will sing. 
Listen for the spiritual prayer to God in that second verse. And the plea that we are waiting for a better day. A better day. Indeed, that is our prayer. A better day. May it indeed be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.